Greetings everyone, I'm Mar. Once again, this is my opinion. As you can tell from the title up there, I'm continuing my trek through the episodes of Everybody Loves Raymond. This is Season 9, Episode 9, A Date for Peter. I find it interesting just looking at these titles of the episodes that we had a job for Robert, now we have a date for Peter. <laughs> would have been funny if the next one would have been something else with and then a character name, but or even just Tasteless Frank being next, but alas, nope. Now... This is one written by Mike Royce, and from the episode you see of him, this is more or less what you would expect from him. Another one of the writers that even this far along in the show's life, you can definitely tell he knows these characters. Even if uh, like some aspects of this season are starting to be eh. This is one of the episodes where, even with as a whole this season, are starting to feel a little bit <clears throat> of the age of the show. This is a concept that adds a little bit of freshness to it. Not to the same degree as, say, uh, Amy being in there, but since it is her brother, and he's only been in a handful of episodes even since the wedding, it adds a little bit to it, especially with the direction the plot goes in. Now, last time we saw Peter, he was essentially forced out of his parents' house because he decided he was going to come in, visit, and they kind of like the idea of him not being there, even though when we see him in this episode, Pat starts breaking down crying and uh, <clears throat> he's now 100% on his own now he is living in Robert's old apartment which of course we know the behind the scenes reason for that would be oh we can just save on a set just use Robert's old apartment and he seems to be having a nice time there I mean life has gone downhill a little bit since he got essentially kicked out by his parents and that he lost the lease on his comic book store now I wonder how that happened. It could be that he just stopped paying on it, but more than likely the landlord decided to be scummy and raise the rent to the point where it couldn't be rented out. Which I get that prices and stuff increase, but I don't get the point of constantly raising the rent to the point where no one's going to be able to rent it and it just sits there empty and you're just paying property tax on something that's not even making a active income. That's my little thought on it. Well, he's selling the comics out of his apartment but since most of his client base is still in Pennsylvania it's not doing that good even though you would think there would be people that would buy comics in the New York area think about it New Yorkers hearing that there's a guy that sells comics but he's doing it out of his house I think that the red flags are going to be raised especially in the era that this episode was made in yeah it's gonna be one of those things like yeah we're not gonna trust the guy especially when they see him and then you're like, it's the strong hand guy? That's one thing I never mentioned, Peter. I don't think I mentioned it. Peter's actor is the guy that plays Mr. Strong Hand in Scary Movie 2. Take my hand! <laughs> so he definitely has comedic chops. I, I, I'm just bringing it up. Now, the episode begins with Ray being visited by Robert, Amy, and Amy's parents. And they bring up Peter and... His little issues, you know, losing the lease in the comic book store, and the fact that they expected him to get married and all that, maybe that will help. Ray decides to go over there, talk with him, see what's going on. Now, from what we've seen with Peter, we can see why, for the most part, he might not be popular with the ladies. And speaking with someone who never been super popular with the ladies, even though I'd have to say it's funny enough, I've seemed to have been more popular with them when I went to the, my current job than before but of course that was also when I was a little leaner compared to now but you know depression and uh, COVID will do that to you How, and now back on to the main thing he even tells Ray a story about going to a bar and essentially being loudly rejected which if the lady did it in the manner that he said is like okay Turning someone down is within your right, but there's no need to be a bitch about it. And yeah, I'm going to use that phrase here because if someone, regardless of gender, rejects someone in the manner that they this person did, then sorry, yeah, that's being a bitch. There's no need for bitchy, as uh, Deborah would say. You can just say, yeah, just say hi, be polite, and then just be like not interested if the past is continued. You don't have to be that mean. Well... Deborah had a kind of a solution for this. Ray originally didn't want to go with it, but then after hearing Peter's dilemma, he decides, you know what, this cannot be the worst thing, and that is having a cocktail party. 
And it is a low-level party. I mean, there's a couple people that show up. Robert's over doing bar service. I mean, he doesn't really know a lot of the names for mixed drinks, which I'm going to tell you a lot of the times it's like, what the heck? That's the name of a drink? But then other ones, you kind of get why there's the name of a drink for that. Like, I don't know if this would translate that well over to the other to other states, but a name like L.A. Water for a drink with a lot of stuff in it, you kind of get all the different Long Island iced tea variations. You get that. Adios, motherfucker. You get that. <laughs> or uh, one that I heard about, Four Horsemen. You kind of get that when you hear what's in it. But like the ones that Robert cites, it's like, yeah, that's a weird name. That's a very niche drink. Now, Peter shows up. Everything seems to be in for him as usual. And then the surprise guest shows up. It's none other than Raymond's arch nemesis, Peggy herself. And she was invited by Deborah. And, of course, Ray is very surprised by this. He's like, why is she here? Which I can kind of get, especially with how their original interactions with. Now, they don't bring up the last time these two interacted, which was the episode involving the tent, where they kind of understood each other a little bit more in that episode. But I think it works for the comedy a little bit better to just bring up their negative interactions, like when Peggy beat him up with the table. Now, Peter and Peggy hit it off like that. You can see there's good chemistry between them. And the actors, they really sell it. And you can already tell with the individual characters we've been following since the beginning how they're going to react. Ray is seething. You can tell he's trying his best to try to interrupt this. Deborah is trying to head him off of the pass and be like, stop it, Ray. And of course, Robert, all of his back and forth interactions can be summed up with the Spongebob troll face. Because he's loving how uncomfortable this is making his brother. And this is when he really goes into bartender mode. Or before, if he doesn't know what it is, he's like, you'll have a beer. And then he gets out the cocktail shaker. You know he's ready to have a fun time. And this all comes to a head when Ray blows his stack. And this causes Peggy to storm out. Now, this is after Frank and Marie show up. Now, like her usual plans, Deborah was going to try to keep those two away, but then they show up anyway. They don't really ruin the night, funny enough, so she could have invited them over and not have to worry about anything. And, of course, the person who she held the event with turned out to be the one that ruined the event. Good old Raymond. Now, he's... The main thing that Ray is complaining about, of course, is usual things about Peggy, but also he uses the word marriage. Now, part of that is you can see that the whole thing with them trying to find somebody for Peter is eventually for him to hook up to that point with. But this is a situation where you probably shouldn't have used it, but we all know why Ray did, because he wanted to scare Peggy away, and it seems like it does, because she leaves, and then Peter goes to try to follow her, and everyone is justifiably angry at Ray. Because this is a situation where it's like Raymond... Really, you had to get involved in it. So Ray does the sensible adult thing, and he goes to Peter's apartment to apologize to him. And this is where the ending that this episode deserves comes in. Because Peter's not alone. Peggy comes from the room part of the set, and she's wearing a nerdy t-shirt and apparently nothing else. And Ray's reaction, he's all like, so you know what those two have been doing. And part of that stems from their conversation earlier, where they find out they went to the same convention back in the 80s. Which, watching this now, I really had to do the math real quickly, because when I hear that, I'm thinking of, like, now, but then I'm like, wait a minute, this was an episode from the early 2000s? So this is, like, talking about a convention from almost 20 years ago. Which, given that the characters are probably about the same age as their actors, this would have been one when they were in their 20s, so... It makes sense to be reminiscing on that. And Peggy went to the convention as Princess Leia. So that kind of ties in a little bit to this little tet a tet Now, of course, this is the last episode Peggy appears in, which, considering how many more episodes are left in the show, makes sense. But I would like to imagine that this relationship did continue after this episode, and it is a happy ending. 
do not go there, you dirty-minded people. It is a happy ending for Peter and for Peggy. And uh, on the commentary, they do mention the spinoff. They were talking about it. Um, so I'm assuming when they were recording the commentary, they were still in discussions to do the spinoff with, uh, with uh, Brad, which never happened. I wouldn't have minded seeing it, but he got his, I guess, kind of a spiritual one with two death to us part. And it's over 20 years, so, I mean, if revivals are all in, if they were to do a revival of the show, I wouldn't mind. It'd be nice to see if Peter and Peggy got their happy ending, even if they're only, like, recurring characters, just as a thought. Of course, the sad thing is Doris and Peter are no longer with us, so there's that. But if they did something right, they'd probably have it be where <laughs> Ray and Depp are now essentially like Frank and Marie. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that could work to an extent. I mean, we saw that they can do the miming thing in Season 2, so it would work. But All in all, this is a pretty decent episode. I mean, the premise, just from hearing the premise, you get the comedic moments you come to expect. I could definitely see this not being everyone's cup of tea. I mean, Peter especially is kind of a hard character to get behind, especially with the stuff we've seen him do, like the stuff at the wedding, trying to split up. Robert and Amy, even though you can say with some of his interactions since then he's kind of made up for, but it's one of those things you never really forget someone trying to do crap like that. But then again, with some of the stuff that happened in the relationship between Robert and Amy, you can say the same thing there. But speaking of which, guess who also makes a surprise appearance in this episode? Stefania! I forgot about that, so when I saw her appear, I'm like, oh my god, Stefania! And of course, they do all the jokes you would expect out of that, including Ray trying to nudge Peter towards Stefania, which that would have been interesting in an awkward sense as well, because then they could have switched the comedy over to Robert being the awkward one and Ray being the one with the SpongeBob troll face on, but they didn't do that. Uh, depending on what you think about the character of Peggy, that might also impact whether you like this episode or not. I mean, part of the dialogue does bring up the whole thing about strong women and all that, which I have no problem with strong women. I mean, I was raised by a strong woman and my grandmother. I mean, my abuela is also a, was also a strong woman. And most of the women I've been attracted to are, to varying degrees, strong. Like, some might be stronger than others in one way, but... I have no problem with strong women. It's when you take... It's when you try to define another type of quality as strong. That's where it is. Like Peggy is a strong woman in some regards, but in other ones... Yeah, that's not strong. That's just... I don't, I don't want to say a certain word with that, but that's just being... Uh, you guys know what word I'm probably trying to avoid using in this situation, but... Probably no avoiding it. I mean, that's just being a bitch. I mean, from how we see saw Peggy behave in her first couple appearances, that's essentially what she is. I mean, we find out in her backstory episode why apparently she's like that. But even then, it's like, that's no excuse for that type of behavior. I mean, even with the whole male-dominated world type thing, especially in the era that the episodes are produced in, it's like, yeah, that's an excuse for bad behavior. That's kind of like when you try to come up with a good excuse, not an explanation, an excuse, for Ray's man-child behavior. A little different. But. Like, even. Outside of those couple of things. Whether you enjoy this episode. Is going to be whether you still enjoy the show. This far into the run. Or whether you're starting to get a little burned out by it. If you don't like this episode. I can see why. I mean this is an episode that I thought. From the premise I was getting of hating. With the rewatch. Because I don't really remember a lot about it from the previous ones. But it is one, maybe it's because I'm a little bit older now. Because it's been about a decade since I first watched this episode. So, being closer in age to the characters. And, you know, a little bit more life experience. I can't find myself hating. It's not one I'll probably go out of my way to rewatch Unless I'm watching, you know, the show as a whole again. It's definitely one that hits a little closer to home. Maybe also because the fact it's still single and all that at 35. But... That's a whole other thing, but it is. It's not like a surprise one, like some of the episodes have been. It's just one that I find myself enjoying a little bit more than I thought I would. 
there's not really much else to say about this episode. I mean, not not a lot of interesting trivia or whatnot. It's just one that it's there. I don't know if I call it filler either. Yeah. Now the next one, we're gonna hit episode ten, which means the long crawl towards the end is even closer. This is one just from the title. I don't really remember much of the premise, but it'll probably come to me. The next one's gonna be favors. But that's next time. Till then, everybody.